Okay, Jackie, it looks as though uh, we're live on Facebook and it's my hey. pleasure everyone to welcome uh, Jackie Ribbons. I'm Peter Giesman from AJS and we're coming to you th today from a little town just half an hour away from sunny okay, Launceston. Jackie, it looks as though uh, we're live on Facebook and I'll just... And hey. it's my pleasure. So Jackie, how are you this morning? Very well yourself. Excellent, thank you. All the better for seeing you. Both of you. We've got two of you this morning. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> now, uh, yeah, we had a really good time last time, and we're going to expand our uh, information that you're passing on about the polishing and opals. So, and today, yep. it's all about bolder opals and chasing colour. Can you just tell us what that's all about? Well, I've had, had a few people asking me um, where do they start with knowing how to orientate, orientate a piece of boulder or getting the most colour out of it. And it's the colour that ultimately the customer wants or that you want as a jeweller. So um, it's trying to get the best out of that stone that you can. And that is where the years of skill come in because it's not always obvious as it looks. So I'd like to explain a little bit about that. Excellent. Yeah. Well, we'll look forward to that. And I'm sure people will be interested in the tips and tricks that you'll have to offer. So um, what's uh, our starting point and what are some of the tools we're going to be using today? We're going to be using the whole, the whole kit and caboodle of the cutting wheels. Um, we're also going to be using a flashlight and um, some, good, some good loops if you need it, if your eyesight's good. But a really good light if you haven't got the sunlight. If you've got the sunlight, do all of this outside. It's really hard to demonstrate this inside, but I'm going to do my best for you today. Excellent. Okay. So uh, what are we going to work on first then, Jackie? Well, I'll, I'll just start with running through what the colour is in, which is the host rocks, rock or the matrix called ironstone. And... Um, it is something that people find difficult to polish because <clears throat> ironstone comes in a lot of different formats, if you like. So anything from, where are we going to go? Are we going to go with this camera here? Yep. So <clears throat> you can have the host rock that looks pretty much like that. It's ironstone um, when you get it on your shirt. Everybody complains about um, trying to get that red dust out of your clothes. But if you can see those veins going through there, that's the colour. And opening up those, those bits of colour, not always as easy as it looks. Stick it in some water. For everybody that's cut opal, we will stay COVID safe because usually you spit on it, especially when you're in the field. <laughs> or used to, used to, we're COVID safe here now. Um, so you put some water on it and that will give you a bit of an idea of how much real colour is in there. And these veins are what we open up. So you can open those up various ways. In the last video, I showed you how somebody had been a nutcase and hit it with a hammer, and that's the result. Um, you can put a screwdriver or a blunted chisel into these when it's a big rock and start to open it up in the field so that you know what you might be chasing. And I'll put this other one down because it's distracting. So all of these veins have got the ability to turn into a nice stone. When you turn it over, you kind of look and you go, oh, you'll never polish this. Well, I have polished this in the past. It's not as bad as it actually looks. Um, when it's flaky, yep you've got no chance, but you'll try and, and work this as much as you can to get whatever colour you are actually chasing. When it's pretty obvious, like this, then, yeah, you can go, yeah, I can do that. But even with this little piece, why I adopt this up to show you is if this is the colour here, it might be tempting to... to cut and polish that from this side because you can see the colour here. But if we actually rotate it, the flash is greater, the precious flash as we call it, 
is greater from this direction. So this is actually the better orientation for this stone, is polishing it back this way. Even though it looks like there's more colour, this will give a better result because you've actually got more of the precious opal. Does that make sense? Yeah, so that's a, a big decision to make as to which direction you come at it from. It's a, the orientation takes as long as actually cutting the opal, so, or sometimes longer. And then you might want to get a, if it's a, a, if it's a bit of a seam, you might want to get a flashlight and put it on the seam and see if you can see how deep it is. This is going to be really hard to show on this video, but with a with a flashlight, you can you can get a little bit more of a of a sense of how deep that color goes or where the color is brighter, and that's what you're actually chasing. Which which direction does the eye perceive that opal as being brighter or a flash of colour? So ultimately, you're trying to get a decent flash of colour on, on your finished product. So you're wanting to work out where can that be. And so if this stone was cut from that direction, although it's a beautiful, beautiful colour, um, from this, if it was cut, cut from a different direction, it might have been a, been a di very different result. So at the end of the day, it's where is that flash of colour going to come from and, and how are you going to set it? Are you going to set it in a ring? Is it going to be a pendant? Is it going to be something that's some, around somebody's neck? Because if it's around the neck, it's going to be a different focus to where your eyes are perceiving those flashes. A good opal is one where you can see, it, see the colour, no matter where the light is. If you've got to give it a real jiggle, I mean, I have to in this light. I mean, this, this opal, you do not have to give it a jiggle to see the reds. But with these lights today, it's, it's really hard to actually see those reds. Um, so a good sheet of colour is always a good sheet of colour, but you want that flash. You want that that sheet of colour if you can get it. So that's what you're trying to drive for. So getting the opal in the direction that you are going to see that or your eyes are going to perceive it. And it's all about what the eyes perceive. Um, so, yep, tempting to cut that rock all the way down and make it that big, but it's actually going to be a better result to get a smaller stone and cut it from that that top direction down. So I've docked this so I can actually take all of that back off and go from that direction down. The other, the other thing people have a lot of problem with is this kind of thing. <laughs> Very ugly, <laughs> bit of colour. You go, oh, but it could be nice. It could be nice. And yes, it could be very nice, but it's also going to break your heart if you don't know what you're doing. So you see how porous that is. Well, that's going to translate on the cutting wheel. So it's like cutting a piece of rocky road or a piece of violet crumble. As soon as you get down, you're going to keep on making yourself little holes. There are treatments for this. There are ways of dealing with this. Um, which I have done in the past when it's been a sentimental piece for somebody. And I've gone, okay, your great grandfather found it doorstep. Okay, <laughs> I'll do something with it for you. But um, in general, we won't bother about that. We might cut this out and this out. But as, as a whole specimen, yeah, probably not. Um, the So can you see the difference between Bit of a wet. This kind of colour ironstone, which is very light in colour, muddy looking in colour almost, and then you have something dark like this. The darker the ironstone, the more it is going to polish up beautifully because the closer the grain in the ironstone. So it will take a polish, it will take a, 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 a good going on the wheels and so you will you know you will get a good luster on okay. that iron stone so that's when um, you know you're under a good thing yes you know when you when you see good color in that dark iron stone keep it 
you know, if you're looking at a gem fest or something and there's a whole pile of opal and you're trying to go which bit is which, if it's got the dark ironstone and you can see bits of bits of colour in it, then that that will make a great stone, um, either as a picture opal or as you know to, to wear or as a specimen um, to put on your shelf. So that's that's always worth looking out for. And talking of picture opal, I mean, you take something like that and you go, oh, there's a lizard there. And so you might want to cut that little lizard out and leave his legs and and do something with it. Those little you see how the ironstone is 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 lighter there and darker here. So mm. there is going to be a difference in um, in the, the polish in those two if you're not careful. So you've just got to take it gently. And as if you're polishing, you know, a couple of different types of wood together, you've just got to be sensitive to the most vulnerable. So you've got to be sensitive to that lighter stuff. The harder stuff's going to polish up every day of the week but the lighter stuff's going to take a little bit more time and, and go through the grits a little bit gentler. So don't jump from, from 200 to 600. Do 300, do 400 in between, and then you will close the grain of those lighter areas and then hopefully pull up some of the colour that's going through there. In Back in the old days, there's... Um, this is, a, this is an old nibbler. So if I wanted to take some of that rock off of that lizard, you can either put it through the soil or go for your life. But there's, there's this. This was given to me by a very old friend um, who used to be the head geologist at the ISA. Um, and this is an old nibbler. It gives some people that have got a French background maybe a bit of a nightmare, but yeah. It's um, that's what you nibble the, the rock away with. You can do it with a chisel. So as how I old said. would that one be? Do you reckon, Jackie? Oh, look, I'd say that's maybe forties. And you can do it with here <laughs> and then. I'm playing funny buggers on you. Yeah, we'll use this camera for a bit. There you go. Yeah. So I've 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 used these both on my horse and. <laughs> <laughs> And on uh, for hooves. And but when you uh, gilded it. The bigger ones you can use, especially. And they're really good just to nibble the sides of rock away, just to expose a little bit of colour if you're chasing it in the field. Um, things you, that you do. But gentle, again, as I said in the first video with the knuckleheads that took a hammer to that beautiful yower, um, gentle is the best policy. Just a little bit at a time, a little bit at, at a time. So it might be as delicate as that. It might be um, as undelicate as the nibbler. But yes, you are chasing colour. Again, this is a nice one for... Um, this one is a nice one for showing the, the difference in that iron stone. There's a lot of colour in this, and it's very it's it's fairy dust. It will it will take a bit of gentle behaviour to bring that up, but there is a lot of colour in there that unfortunately is not showing up on this camera. Um, but nice dark ironstone that'll come up a tree. No worries. This this is an example of that lighter. For all of you that don't believe that you can get a good finish on the lighter stuff, this is a nice example. I mean, if that doesn't look like some beautiful painting, I don't know. You know, that's the dark and that light. And that's just, it, it's got purple colours through it, but you can't see it again. But that is how you can bring up that lighter stone. Mm. That's beautiful. So, any questions so far, Peter? Will I will I put some power onto the phone? Uh, not at the moment. So, we're talking about boulder opal. Where does boulder opal come from? Queensland, predominantly. Mm -hmm. um, and where does it rank as far as quality of opals? Well, all all opal is good opal in my book. Um, the 
black opal. So something that people get confused in, they say, well, is, why is white opal not white and why is black opal not black? Well, all of the colours, red, orange, yellow, green, indigo, violet, blue, all come in black opal, white opal or boulder opal. It's predominantly a, a term used for their location and their type. So in the ironstone, it's boulder. In the, you know, the black opal uh, from Lightning Ridge, it, it comes in a black potch and Cooper P. D. Andamuka comes in a white potch. So um, the colour of the opal, what is colour in the opal doesn't describe what type of opal it is. Boulder opal, a good boulder opal is, is red, any colour. Um, so you can have all of those colours in every type of opal from whichever location. It's personal preference which one you like the most, but am I allowed to have a favourite? I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be like giving rock, your favourite child. Rock, rocks coming at me. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, they're all they're all beautiful, and you, whether you're chasing colour in a white or a black or a boulder, it doesn't matter which one's easier to polish. They're all about the same. Um, you've all you, with all of them, you've got to orientate them the same. So you're looking at that colour, you're searching for it, you're looking at where the most powerful flash is going to come from, and whether it's a harlequin flash, which is a big sheety flash, or whether it's pinpoints or whether it's a seam, um, you just want the best you can get out of that rock. I mean, it's created millions and millions of years, so don't stuff it up with one hit against a wheel wrong. Do your best to orientate it correctly and you'll get the best out of that stone. And sometimes, you, do, you, you know, you'll look at something as big as that and you'll go, well, that will never do much really for a ring or a pendant, but, hey, might make a nice belt buckle, might make something else, might you might put it into a knife handle that is a, is a not something that's going to go through the dishwasher, <laughs> but might be something specialist or um, a letter opener. Not that we get much letter openers anymore. We haven't done one of them in a few years. Well, let's start cutting something, shall we? Hey, yes. Hey, hey, hey. Um, that's a bit big for a demo. And that one's got to be my favourite. In, in That one's on my Instagram for, just... uh, of me cutting that one. Where are we? Right yeah. Yeah. That one's on my Instagram of me cutting that. And I just, I just love it. It's one of my favourites. But you see how stepped it is. If I chased all of that colour to a flat surface, I'd be left with nothing. Mm. So you have got to go, you've got to make some really tough, look at that red. You've got to make some really tough decisions on where to take it and, and what to use it for. And this one is, is just perfect for me for a demo. We're um, getting a tremendous look at that now. The, the amount of colour in that is unbelievable. It is just Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Mm. So, I, you know, if, if I cut that, see that nice red flash there, mm. I could sacrifice the whole stone and just go for that red flash. And sure, I, it might be nice, but I would always look at that red flash and remember the rest of the stone that was there. Yeah, brothers and sisters that you cast aside. But, yeah, I just, couldn't, I just couldn't go any further. So I just really enjoyed this as a specimen and so of my customers mm. and um, it's it's a good demo well look so at it powered it yeah yeah you know did i tell did i tell you the story of the little kid that was in the shop years ago and right. he's he's tugging at me he's going excuse me miss i was a miss back then <laughs> <laughs> and that's <laughs> how long ago it was and uh, he said, excuse me, Mrs. I had a shop full of customers. And I said, look, I'm sorry. Can I just finish what I'm doing? And um, look, at the, look at the oranges and the, can you see those greens there on that, on that yeah. profile? There's hundreds of um, dollars in there. Yeah. 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 And that's what it's all about. 
And he said, oh, I'm sorry. I said, sorry, I'm busy. I'll come back to you. Anyway, there was a, it was a beautiful opal in the counter. And um, he said, excuse me, miss, but you've left the light on on that, on that one. <laughs> he thought it was battery operated. Oh. The, whole, the whole shop just melted. <laughs> so just while we were uh, talking about um, getting started in that, Jackie, you should just mention that um, you actually do little uh, tailor-made classes for people. And so if someone wants to have a trip to Tassie and include a, a couple of days tuition with yourself, that could be awesome. Yeah, upskill. Upskill. Yeah. Come on. Come on, upskill. So, um, yeah, just think about that and contact Jackie. She's uh, got her details here in the uh, post that we're in at the moment. So. I, ha I had a lovely gentleman from Sydney... Um, a couple of weeks ago, he brought down a black opal and, um, yeah, about the size of my hand. Wow. And he said, can we, can we do this? And I said, yeah, we can do this. <laughs> <laughs> I said, you do it, but I'm going to be sitting on your shoulder like a parrot. <laughs> <laughs> but we spent, we spent easily, I would say, uh, probably close to an hour orientating that stone um, and it was another one where it, it looked obvious putting the light on the front that that would be the, the straight orientation but when you looked down with a torch through those veins um, the orientation was a little bit different so um, that was a classic example of don't just be gun ho spend the time orientating that stone it's worth it Indeed. Okay, so um, I'll just finish off with one comment from another comment from Pete, who said he started on zebra stone from WA. You've worked on yep. zebra stone. Yeah, yeah, zebra stone's nice. It's, it can be a bit, can be a bit crumbly as well, um, but it, it, it's quite soft, so it's it's fairly easy. Um, it's a little bit like woodwork. Sometimes working on soft wood is actually harder in the long run than working on a hard on a hard wood that will bring up that shine. So again, something like a hard surface is easier and will give you the, a little bit more of a, a feeling of achievement. So it might progress you a little bit further down the track um, in the desire to want to keep doing it. So work on things that you love. Full stop. You know, Indeed. a really beautiful piece of Shatoyant tiger's eye that just gleams back at you is is a joy as well. If he's getting zebra snow, but he's but he's in good tiger's eye country. Mm. So, uh, what what rock are we going to work on then, Jackie? Uh, look, I think uh, because I've had the, the questions about the difficulty in getting a polish on the ironstone, um, I think I might do this little guy as a specimen. Uh, where are we going to go? Yeah, I'll come over to you. Hang on. Come over this way. So there's a nice little bit of colour in there. Mm. And that little, little piece there. So it'll make a nice little specimen. It's not a great flash, but it's something that people would look at that bit of iron stone and go, that you'll never get a polish on that. So... We might do that just to be stubborn. Um, and should I do this one? This one's not probably not going to show up very well on the camera, even when the colour is there. And this little guy is just throwing reds up at me. It's only throwing greens up at the camera. Um, so I'm not do that one. Should we do the lizard or should we do this, this big specimen? This is another sort of really, it's, it's, it's nothing really pretty to look at, but I think by the time we finish, it will be something nice. Um, or we could do the lizard. Let's see how far we get, eh? So when you say lizard, what do you, what do you mean? Is there a... What's the lizard connection? See, there's a lizard in that. On the top left there. Oh. Uh, it looks like a lizard's yeah, body. Yeah. yeah it's okay. hard and the legs. It's figuratively speaking. Bit of artistic license. Come on. 
Yeah, okay, I'll go for it. Yeah. <laughs> um, and that's a nice little bit of colour in the middle there. Again, I looked at this this morning and the obvious thing would be to take it face down, but it's actually a little bit more on the angle where you get the flash. So let's just cut, eh? Let's do it. Jackie's just turning some water on. If you've got little pockets on this floor of stuff, you can translate. So if you're just going to try and think tidy as you go on. Just having a bit of trouble hearing you with the machine on, Jackie. No, so what was that, Peter? We're just having trouble hearing you when the machine's on. Right. Yeah. Well, is it okay if I just keep going? Yeah, you keep going. Um, just while you have pause, it was interesting because... Uh, We've got an automatic um, subtitling thing happening via Facebook and it was trying to subtitle your machine. So that was interesting. <laughs> and Basically, what I'm going to do, I'll, I'll, just, I'll just go up in the line then. We're going to go from 80 to 180 to 220. Um, I would prefer to do about a 400 in between with this, but unfortunately I didn't kit out the wheels for this, so it's going to be, it's going, to be going to 600, 1,200, 3,000. Okay. Um, and what I was saying is try and keep it clean in between because if you've got a bit of grit that translates in that um, porous stuff up the wheels, by the time we get up here, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be scratching itself or worse, damaging your wheels. Yeah. So. And I just a quick question from Sally. Do you always dop up even with large pieces? No, 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 no. No, I do... Like that one I'll do by hand or that one I'll do by hand. Um, and this one I only docked up because I, I, I knew I'd get some kind of a, a shape going on with it, as in a specific pendant shape. Right. Something like the specimen, all of these sort of things I do by, I do by just holding them because they'd be too heavy for a dop stick. And the little pieces, even... Even something like that um, is, I could do it by hand, but one of my students who's got bigger, chubbier fingers, just because he's a, a bigger guy, um, he wouldn't be able to do that. So your safety is number one, that you're not going to hit, hit it with your, your fingers or it's going to fly back at you because you can't hold it while it's wet because understanding that it is all underwater. So safety first and um, then at attempting what you can attempt with a, with a bigger stone. But all of these sort of sizes I do by hand. I have also got another set of machines that I do. The, the larger ones I do on a larger machine. Um, so when I go from sort of that size and up, I do on a different set of machinery. Um because it's just too, too, too awkward on these. No worries. Okay, <laughs> onward and upward. Now, yeah, where were we? We're at, we're at 180. So we're going to just finish off at 180 and then go up to 
So by the time I finished 220, I finished forming. So I finished making the actual form that I'm happy with. Okay. Which is that shape there. Yeah. And now I will start polishing it. But I've been very gentle, so I can, even with my finger, I can feel that that lighter ironstone is equal to the darker ironstone. Like I haven't got hollows, I haven't got um, any ridges in it that's separate. I've got a ridge on there because I want, I want them. But I haven't got any ridges in the actual stone from dark to light colour. So, I just thought you keep going. Uh, Sally just wanted to confirm that that's water you've just got in the spray bottle, correct? Water. Yep. No yep. yep. Thank, thanks, Sally. And oh, another one from Jane. Uh, a lot more of the lighter has come out, she said. Yes, it has. So that's opened it up. It's opened it up there. So what we were seeing before was a, a dark ridge with that, with that, um, and now we've pulled it down. So that would probably open up to even more if we went down. Doesn't matter because it's it's gonna, gonna keep its its look. I think it looks like an indigenous painting as it is. It does, yeah. Love it. Okay, ready? More That's noise. Yes. Yeah. So water on. <coughs> How's it coming, Jackie? It's looking nice. So now, so the point, as I've said in the previous video, the point of every time you go up a grit is to take the scratches from the previous grit out. So now we've taken all of the 220, we've got a smooth, uh, try and get you through there, a smooth rock. We've taken all of those scratches out. There might be a little bit left right there. Can you see that? A little darker shadow there. Might just okay. touch that a little. But we want to have all of the scratches from that previous 220 all gone. We're closing up that grain. Uh, looking good. Yeah. And as you, as you can still see the lizard. <laughs> <laughs> and Sally's impressed with your little water bucket there too so she's going to add that to her repertoire yes yes it's good good behaviour okay and foot pedal foot pedal is always a good thing to add on on off switch so no hands on electricity so I'm just going to go back to 600 for a second <coughs> Oh, Jack, you just got a question from Megan. Now, what do you do when you get a soft spot? Well, you take it very gently. So my pressure on these wheels will, will, will determine that. So let's say that piece that we were examining before, let's say that started to fall away, then I'd have to rethink. Do I want to keep it there? Do I want to get rid of it completely? Um, will it change the what I'm trying to achieve out of the stone? Will it take away colour? Um, 
with this one, it's purely, you know, artistic license with with all of those differences in the Einstein. Um, but you you have to sometimes make a tough decision if it if it just keeps on opening up, like, um, you know, if it if it's a if it's a funnel shape, if I can put it like that, if it's a funnel shape going down, um, and you've just hit the top of the funnel, and you're and you're going to open it up, open it up, open it up, then you might as well get rid of it. It's either that, or I have seen it, and I don't like it. You can hit it with the Dremel and really be artistic with it, but it would have to be an amazing bit of colour that you're you're trying to leave alone in order to do that. Um, again, I, again, same comment applies. It's an ugly stone. It's still an ugly stone. So it's got to be the best that it can be. Um, so it is a difficult one, but yeah, you, you, you can do that. I have also seen people finish off a stone and then fill it with epoxy. Oh. So just to repeat, the, the sound just broke up there when you were having your key moment there, Jackie, and uh, your comment was, oh. it's an ugly stone, it's an ugly stone. So it's an yeah. ugly stone is still an ugly stone. And if you fill, fill a hole with epoxy, you're, you're making a really poxy stone. <laughs> so, you know, it's, it's not a good look. So decisions do have to be made, and sometimes they they you know they pull on your heartstrings. But if it opened up, if that if if that bit of light stuff opened up, then we would have to think: do we cut it off? Do we start again? How do we reshape it? Do we go back? You know, don't think that you've gotten up to here, so you can't go backwards. You can go backwards. <laughs> There's nothing stopping you from going backwards. You're the one in control. You're the one doing it. So. Um, you, it's it's one process at a time. So I'm happy that we've gotten to this far with this stone, so I can still go forward. I can still go ahead with going to going to 1200 now and going up the line. If it did open up, I can go backwards. Does that answer your question? It does. Yes, and uh, yeah. you've just added something to Sally's shopping list. She's now ordering a foot pedal. So there you go. She's already what? She's ordering a foot pedal. Yes. 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 Yeah, very handy. I've, I've got them on nearly all of my machines now. Um, hands and electricity really don't work, and when they're wet, so foot pedals are fantastic. I love them. And in woodwork, you have different um, knee nudges as well that you can turn things on with your knee. So you know, cross contaminate different industries. Because sometimes you can find one thing that is very, very handy for another. And foot pedals are definitely my little your home moment. All right, now going on to 1200. Make sure she's clean. Make sure my hands are clean. That's what jeans are for. <laughs> <laughs> and away we go. So by 1200 grit, you should should be starting to get a, a bit of a shine on it. That's dry now. Look. Okay, yeah, that's no, nice and glossy. Yep, so you're starting to get that shine. Um, that is not a polish, but it, we're starting to get a shine. Um, a bit of in the middle. Nothing's fallen out. Nothing's fallen over. Lizard's still there. There he is. <laughs> um, and there's a bit of a green flash. Can you see the green flash coming up on his leg? Down here? Um, 
Can you get that on the camera, Matt? I can't myself. Uh, well, yep. So again, if you didn't see the first video, the, what a polish is for people that haven't thought about it, the pol a polish is the eye's perception of reflection. Again, so if it's a piece of metal, piece of wood, piece of silver, piece of gold, piece of whatever, it doesn't matter, it's all the same. So it's what the eye perceives as reflection back to it of light. So um, if we put that under a really big microscope, it would be matte. <laughs> when we look at it with our, with our, with our human eyes, it's, it's getting a shine. Okay. So it depends on how you magnify that to how, how um, fussy we want to be. Um, and when you're faceting, obviously we're, we're under big, big loops. And um, the other thing sometimes that I do, and I've got my other one here, is sometimes when you need it, just double up on your fronts of your magnification. That helps. Don't just use a single lens. Yeah, another couple of comments and questions. Uh, Jane did see the green flash, so that's good. Yay! <laughs> And she also asked, uh, do you need an electrician to wire your foot pedal? No, it's a plug-in. It's a plug-in. Excellent. Um, oh, Gail saw the green as well. So there you go. I better go make an appointment for the optician. And Sally uh, said, are you able to advise what wheels you are using? I got the grips, but uh, some metal and some polymer. Yes, well, I'm, this machine I'm running at the moment, I mean, I've got a lot of machines, but this one that I'm running at the moment, this one is on metal diamonds. These are diamond Nova wheels. So um, they're, they're a little bit more forgiving because they've got a sponge behind them. I don't know if you can see it on the camera. I'll turn this other light off and you'll, you'll might be able to see it better. We saw an indent there. Yeah, yeah. can you see that? And can you see the rubber? Yeah. So you've got a little bit more give on that. Not that you want to be um, too hard on these wheels. Um, and pressure is where skill is. Pressure is in. Pressure is. You know, if you lay into your wheels, you're just going to ruin them. Um, if you just lay into one part, you'll ruin it. Keep going across and across and across. Um, and on your stone especially again with this lighter colored um, ironstone, sandstone almost, you want to be as fairy touched as you can. You want to be going gentle. Um, if you lay into it on the harder stones like a quartz or an amethyst or a, um, even a dark piece of ironstone, um, you, can, you can be rougher you, in your pressure, um, but with this, stuff which I'm trying to teach you how to do now, you want to be gentle with it. You want to be considerate of it because you're trying to close what could be considered as powder rock, really. Um, but these never, ever lay into a wheel anyway. Um, but your pressure is where your skill is. And nobody can teach you that pressure. When I've got a one-on-one -on -one student, I literally hold their hand to show them um, the pressure, um, and especially on the on the polishing pad, I'll definitely hold their hand literally to give them that indication of how much pressure to use. That is that is where your learning skill comes in. That's when your time on the wheels is well spent. And um, I, I also can hear when somebody's doing something wrong. Uh, um, because the, the use your ears as well with listening to how your pressure is and that there's a sweet spot in the pressure of the sound is right. When the sound is wrong, it, the sound is wrong. <laughs> it's too much pressure yeah. or, then, or, or, uh, or then there's not enough. Could you just run by the uh, grits of the wheels that you're using at the minute there, Jackie? At the minute, I'm using 80, 180, 220, and then I go up to 600, unfortunately. Ideally, I'd like a, a 400 in between that. 
Um, but on this set, I'm doing 600, 1200, and then up to 3000. And then we're going to be finishing on the polishing pad. No worries. Thank you very much for that. Okay. So we're going to go now from 1200 to 3000. Are we happy? Happy, happy girl. So that's 3,000 and there is a little red flash. There's the brain. I will master these lights one day but indoors with you. But there's also a little bit of red going on in here. Can't seem to get it on the camera. Right. But anyway. Um, yep. So if you can see, if I run the light over that big piece there, you can see that the light is equal there to it is there. So there's no more, no lesser polish on that lighter part of the matrix than there is on the. Okay on the darker. So that's what we want. So that proves the point that you can you can polish the both together. So that being said, I'll see if I can not wear as much of that polish. I use serum oxide when I'm doing um, the buff. I'll see if I can turn this a little bit for you. So there's a felt pad there. It's got serum oxide on it. You just dampen that down. I've impregnated it with cerium. You can just use a bit of a paintbrush, wet your cerium, put it on. But it makes my teeth go a little bit like nails down a blackboard, so I'm not going to do that right now. And um, you're laying with your, your, your piece. Now, make sure your piece is clean because one piece of grit on that felt pad will stay there forever. I usually go and wash my hands as well, but we'll do this for this demonstration value only. Wipe that down with a clean cloth. The other thing that I would prefer to do is just take the, the edge off of that. Um, in my normal work day, I will take that, I'll arrest that edge before I go to the buff as well. But what I'm gonna do is I'm not gonna go all the way down to that edge so that I, I don't risk any loose bit of rock or wax onto my felt pad, which, you know, in the next three or four pieces of stone that I polish on the end of there, it, it picks up, up a piece of that grit and then ruins whatever I've just done. So for the purpose of this exercise, Mm. We should just go straight to it. Well, so, good advice there for sure. You save people potential disasters in the future. Yes, mm. yes. And also, as I said in that first um, video, I just I just had a an evening in Hobart and and um, stayed at a hotel. And the one thing that I come away from a hotel with is those shower caps that nobody picks up in a hotel. <laughs> but that's the best thing to put over. Your, your, your wheel when it's not, not in use. Um, and when you take that felt pad off, either put it in a Ziploc bag or in one of those shower cap things, it, you, you want to keep it clean. Right, we ready? We're ready. Yeah. <laughs> I'm 
and that's it. That's all she wrote. Beautiful. Sorry, the light is so blue and bare, but... I think we've all got the idea. You've got the idea. We do, yeah. So, so from that end to this end, without stopping and talking, it's usually about 10, 15 minutes. Mm-hmm. And then, yeah. So you don't normally get questions. I'm standing. Right? <laughs> um, no. <laughs> so if you've, if you've dropped a few stones up, there's a lot of ways I do it. I can either dop up a heap of stones and then go boom, 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 boom. But I tend to like to do the one story and then the next story, but only because I'm, it keeps your, your focus on what you're trying to get, like a lizard. Um, so, yeah, that's the way you do it. But yeah, great job. how to get polish on limestone, it happens. You do get good polish on limestone. Don't waste it. Don't just, like in sort of 30 years ago, ten even 10 years ago, that would have just gone into a waste bucket and that would have been it. Um, because it's like, oh, no, there's no colour in there really. Um, and there's... What, who wants the ironstone? Well, the ironstone can be a pretty thing in itself. So, you know, pick up pieces, give it a practice and uh, go from there. But from my point of view, it's a real, I will try and capture this on camera if I can. But there's a nice red flash down the bottom. There's another green flash and there's a nice bit of blue up at the top. Um, no worries. So we'll post a picture of that in the uh, comments uh, a bit later on. Yep. Any other questions? Yes. Uh, Ten has asked, how do you get the cerium oxide out in the tiny micropores that aren't visible until you polish? Electric toothbrush. There you go. You're in the cross industries, aren't you? So there you go. I am. Yeah. I'm not a dentist. <laughs> <laughs> but I've got, I've got, in the workshop, I've got three um electric toothbrushes and i have to put on them use for stones only <laughs> because people see them and go what are you what are you doing brushing your teeth in your workshop um but they are very very handy and remember yeah. tooth toothpaste is 1200 grit so if you're especially if you're trying to get that bit of cerium oxide out and you've gone oh now I can't get that. Use a little bit of toothpaste. First of all, use use soap. Um, if that doesn't shift it, then you can move to something like toothpaste that's twelve hundred grit. I think something as bizarre as Jif. You, I've also used that to try and get some bits out. And then really give it a good wash with just plain water. Um, the water out of the ultrasonic as well. Need that bit of of soap works really well. So do some, you assume, some, some, you can't see this, Jackie, so you assume that it's there and you just get into it with your toothbrush, just... Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it, that, that question is really... I've, I've had it myself where you where you have a piece that's as, where are we, you know, as, as ordinary as that, you hit it with the cerium oxide and all of a sudden you've got white patches all the way through it i know i know what i know what, where the question's headed with that i've had yeah. i've been so just hit it with the electric toothbrush it brings it all out you can start again or you can um go to the next part of the process you can also use just a, a take off your felt pad with the cerium to hit it with that toothbrush put a, a plain felt pad on and just do it damp just to just to bring that back up again. In the old days, we used to use a leather one as well. Don't seem to see them anymore. Okay. Um, now we're getting lots of nice comments about today's uh, demonstration. And uh, just to finish off, we've got um, yeah, uh, Megan. Thank you for your time. You are right. Some bits can have amazing colour in them. Uh, Ten says, thanks so much. Uh, I am inspired and excited. 
Uh, Jackie says, another great class. Jackie, thank you so much. Sally, have you ever put a stone into the ultrasonic? Yes. Yeah. It's all, it, as long as you don't set, you know, I keep the temperatures. I wouldn't really go above about 40 degrees. So don't put it in a 60 degree bath or whatever. If it's a heated ultrasonic, why not? Um, but yes, you can for sure put it in an ultrasonic. Not without yeah. a thing. And uh, Lee says, awesome. Thank you. Love it. So lots of great interaction there, Jackie. And uh, for it's those nice. people, you did refer to the first video and there's a few more basics covered in the first video. So I certainly refer people back to that and yep. they can view that at ajsonline.com slash demos. Yep. And uh, you'll be back for further education in the future. Yes. And uh, someone did make a comment that they're going to definitely look you up when they come to Tassie. So that's uh, good thinking. And uh, Gail says, that was awesome. Thanks. Uh, excellent. So what a great morning's presentation. So thank you very much, Jackie. Pleasure. Pleasure. The, the shop is open Thursday, Friday and Saturdays for anybody that's visiting Tassie. Um, and um, if you're interested in lessons, just Throw me, a, throw me a, a text or an email and we go from there. Yeah, and who wouldn't want to spend a couple of days with Jackie? So, <laughs> yeah, excellent. Yeah. Learn a lot in a day. You learn a lot in a day. Yeah, yeah. Now let's stretch right. it out the two. So um, thanks very much, Jackie, and we'll see you next Thank time. You. See ya. Bye-bye.